Hello, this is Hellbent, and welcome back to part two of creating your own smart auto clicker. Um, we're just going to continue on where we left off, and that is where we're going to create our actual hotkey that's going to start our auto clicker. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create a return after this hotkey, so that way I don't forget like before. Um, the next thing we're going to need to do is create some variables and the first couple of variables we're going to create we're going to do up here and what these two variables are is they're going to be the the dimensions of our box so we're going to have a width of our box and a height of our box so we're going to go ahead and create those variables and our actual value that we're going to be using later is actually going to be half of that value because our click location is going to be smack dab in the middle. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create a variable. I'm going to call it, um, how about size of box? And then this is going to be for the X, or in other words, the, the width. And we're going to, and this you're going to want to change later on yourself. Depending on the application that you're going to be running this auto clicker for, you might want it to have it a bigger box or a smaller box. Um, but let me tell you that the larger the box is, the faster you're going to have to move your mouse in order for it to actually pause. The smaller the box is, the harder it is for you to be able to find that box again. So you want it to be, you know, not too big, not too small, just right. So for this, we're going to use a value of 40, which means our click location is going to be 20 to the left of it and 20 to the right of it. So in other words, the box is going to be a width of 40. Now we need a size of our box and y and we're going to do same thing colon equals and these two values can be different you don't have to like you can have it the width really long and the height really short or a reverse that's up to you but uh, just know that when you run it you're going to be changing these often whenever you want to change the size of your imaginary box like i said before this box here is 120 width and 100 watt and 100 tall so that gives you a sense of how big a 40 by 40 is so it's pretty small but it's not it's not that bad um, as long as you remember approximately where you were when you set it you're fine okay so we have those variables now inside of our T hotkey, which is our to start the auto clicker, what we need to do is we're going to create a temp variable that is just going to be, we're going to call this size X. And we're going to say that size X is half of the size of our size of the box. So we're going to say size of box. X. Now, just in case somebody accidentally changes this to a a uh, odd number, we don't want to have a decimal place. So what we're going to do is instead of just using a normal divide, what we're going to use is something called a floor divide, which instead of one slash it's going to be two slashes and what this does is it's only going to give us the answer that's even so if it's for example if i had changed it to 41 and i divide it in half instead of it giving me 20.5 it's just going to give me 20 it's going to drop the 0.5 into oblivion and i have no problems so i'm going to i'm going to floor divide it by two which will give me in this case it'll give me a value of 20. Next, I'm going to do the same thing for the y, and it's going to be colon equals the size of underscore box underscore y, and then once again, the floor divide by 2. Okay, now... As soon as we hit this, what we want to do is we want to assign a value to our stop variable. 
So read as soon as you press this, it's going to assign a value to our stop variable of zero. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to create another variable, and we're going to use this variable to to check if our cursor is actually moved. So if we if we have our auto clicker going, and then we move our cursor, it's going to pause. We're going to create a paused variable. So we're going to say is paused is our variable name is paused. Okay, is paused, and we're going to say that this equals zero to begin with. Uh, let me think. Do we need any other variables? Um, I think that's all that we have to declare for now. So the first thing we're going to do now is we're going to check to make sure that we've actually assigned a value. So we want to make sure that we've actually gone ahead and pressed Control R to get our location and our target window. So we're going to say if if our target window yeah we could do target window well we could use any we can use any of our parameters before and that's what we'll actually do we'll just do target X so if our target X and then I'm gonna say I want to check to see if it does not equal which is exclamation point equals and what we're going to check it to make sure that it actually has a value because if a variable doesn't have a value yet it has something called a null value so I'm going to check to make sure that this doesn't have a null value and if it doesn't then we're going to go into our clicker but if it does if it does have a null value I'm just going to say else and go down a line and I'm going to open and close and I'm just going to type out a message box. Message msgbox, comma, um, that's I think that's fine I think that gets the point across and in what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually test do a quick test so to do that test what we're gonna do is we're gonna do MSG BOX again up inside of our if it does not equal null we're gonna do another one and we're gonna say we're just gonna say that is valid okay we're gonna save our changes and we're gonna run our script and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to press control T without pressing control R first and that should give us our that should give us our forgot to get the assignment so I'm going to press control T and you should be testing this along with me you forgot to assign a value to X and Y okay and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to press control R which will assign it and I'm, now I'm going to press control T again and it says that is valid and every time I press control T now it's always going to be valid because it doesn't have a null value anymore okay so now that that test is out of the way I'm going to press control X to stop the script or exit out of the script so it's not running in the background anymore and I can get rid of this message box because all I really need is this one here which is a prompt to the user of your your uh, auto clicker to say hey you forgot to press control R Okay, the next thing I want to do is as soon as we start our our clicker, what we want to do is we want to check to make sure that the title matches the title that we assigned it by pressing control R because for some reason we might have changed windows after we've pressed control R. So what we're going to do is we're going to test to make sure that we are in the correct window that we have assigned. So we do win get title comma and now we're going to use a temp variable. We're going to call this temp window. And once again we need a we're going to be checking the active window for our win title. And so now we've gotten we've stored the value of our current window 
in a temp variable now what we need to do is check to see if it matches our target window and we do that with an if statement so we say if temp window equals equals target window Okay, that's uh, I think 10 minutes plus now. So I'll finish off this if statement real quick and then we'll continue on the next window, uh, video. So if temp window equals our target window, that's good, yeah. I'll drop down line, tab over. And this is where our actual clicking is gonna happen. But if it doesn't equal that, so we're gonna just have another else. So this is if it doesn't equal it, we're going to do another message box. And we're going to say okay. So it just basically tells the person, hey, you're not in the right window. All right. So I'm going to save those changes. And we'll test that when we come back to the next video. I'll see you there.